All right, here it is, my pros and cons video of New Hampshire. But it's not gonna be like your typical pros and cons video and where I list out a bunch of likes and dislikes. Instead, I'm going to pick some unchangeable characteristics of New Hampshire and let you decide whether you are on Team Pro or Team Con. If this is your first time here, my name is Jen Baer and I am a realtor and ballroom dance instructor here in New Hampshire. Most importantly though, I am a lifelong resident. I grew up in Manchester. I studied at UNH Durham. I have lived and worked all over Southern New Hampshire and I am now currently living in an historic home, raising my family in Hampstead. So if you are looking for inside information on New Hampshire, then make sure you hit that subscribe button so that I can share all that I know with you. By the end of this video, you will have a really good idea where you stand in regards to those things about New Hampshire that will never change and you'll have to decide if you are on Team Pro or Team Con. So let's go find out. First, I am going to talk about location. So New Hampshire is not a very large state and you can do so many things in what I consider a day trip, which you can drive to in the early morning, spend all day doing and drive home at night. So that will include the beach. So in the summer, you can head to the Atlantic Ocean and spend all day on the beach, walking around in your bikini, laying in the sun, boardwalk with fried dough, all of that. Uh, you can also have a day trip up to the mountains where you can go hiking in most of the seasons or skiing in the winter. You can have a day trip to Boston. So if you want to go to a bigger city and have more options for restaurants and museums, that is also considered to me a day trip. Now expanding a little further out from where we are located, if you're thinking of weekend trips, you can actually go to another country, Canada, not that far away. Uh, and they can also travel a little further beyond Boston and hit New York City. Um, totally done that um, for spring breaks as well as weekend trips. So our location kind of in the middle of New England really allows for so many possibilities. Our neighbors are Vermont, Maine, Massachusetts, and Canada. Boston being so close has an international airport and is actually the closest one to Europe. So you would have the shortest flight to actually head to another continent. Now I did say a very important word a few times here and that is drive. Because things are spread out, everyone more or less has a car or two. Therefore, public transportation is not a huge priority. It does exist, but it's not going to get you there in a day or even a weekend if you're thinking of going certain places uh, or might take longer than it would be if you just were to drive. So having a car is one of those necessities. Also being in the Northeast part of the United States, we are not known to be the most ethnically or racially diverse. Um, so we go ahead and take a look at the numbers. According to Wallet Hub, overall, New Hampshire is 47th out of 50, with Vermont and Maine being 49 and 50, respectively. But Massachusetts, which is our neighbor, was ranked 19th. So if that is something that is important to you, you do have Massachusetts and Boston and everything it has to offer right there at your fingertips. But I also think it's interesting to note that on that same survey with Wallet Hub, New Hampshire was actually ranked number two in income diversity. So where we might lack in certain areas, we make up for in others. I'll link down below this video that uh, to the Wallet Hub. So if you want to go and take a look, they really do break it down in so many different categories. You can kind of an idea of where New Hampshire stands on those rankings. All right. Now in terms of location, where do you land? Are you Team Pro or Team Con? Next, I'm going to discuss the weather. A lot of focus is given on winter. I think there's a misconception that we are really cold up here all the time where in fact, New Hampshire has such a unique and diverse weather profile. Every year in a 12 month period, you will go from zero degrees to a hundred degrees. We have blizzards and ice storms, true. And we have heat waves and humidity in the summer. We go th both through those extremes, but speaking of extremes, we really don't have any major natural disasters. I think the blizzards are our only one, which I think is why there is such an emphasis on winter. So what does it really mean to live somewhere that has such a wide range of temperatures and weather throughout a whole year? Four distinct seasons, really. If you can think of the quintessential spring, we have that fall, the leaves are turning beautiful colors right now. Winter, it, everything's beautiful, blanketed in snow. And then our summers where everybody is out at the lakes and the ocean and ex having so much fun because we all know that whatever season we're in, it's not going to last. So we must appreciate it while we're in it. 
And then the next season, once we're in that one, even if it's not one of our favorites, we know it's not going to last and we'll be able to experience the next season. I think it's fun to have all the different clothes. Um, I'll pull out my winter clothes like I'm doing right now and I find my sweaters and I'm like, oh my goodness, I forgot I had that sweater. It's almost like going shopping in my own house. Um, so yeah, you need to be prepared for every season. You need to make sure you do have ways to keep yourself cool. And then in the winters, you're going to make sure you have a snow shovel and a snowsuit, hats and gloves and ways to keep warm. So there is going to be a lot of that preparation. Uh, I do have a video that talks about um, snow important features here in New Hampshire, things to look for if you're buying a home, uh, especially if you're buying it in the summer, not realizing that the attached garage and a mudroom might be those necessities you might need for different seasons. All right, considering everything I mentioned, the wide variety of weather temperatures, which also equals a wide variety of preparation, but also a wide variety of activities you can do. Are you on Team Pro or Team Con? Now for my third characteristic of New Hampshire, it's its history. We are the oldest part of the country. And that means that there are a lot of old things. There are old cemeteries. There are old homes. Uh, there's a lot of history in this part of the country. So if you are looking to purchase a property and you do not want to look at older properties, then you are really narrowing down your pool of available homes because there are so many older properties. Now I did pull some numbers, so let's take a look at those. Out of the entire state of New Hampshire, 2,900 active single family homes, 631 of those were older than 1,900. Out of those, 96 were older than 1,800. And we're not just talking about a little shack by the lake that was, you know, built in 1720 or something. Uh, these houses that are on the market for sale range from $74,000 up to over $6 million. So depending on the property and how it's been maintained and added onto over the years, they are all very unique. Now, if you're also conversely wanting a newer home out of those 2,900, only 394 of those were built since 2010. So you can see that there is a little bit of a disparity there in that we have a lot more older properties. Now, if you are a lover of history, then this can be your playground. <laughs> We have battlefields from the American Revolution. There's Strawberry Bank in Portsmouth, which goes back to 1695. We are the birthplace of presidents, the home of famous poets, and also the first American who was ever in space. If you're interested in New Hampshire history, check out my playlist in which I went out and discovered the New Hampshire Highway historical markers. I am still in the process of discovering more. Taking into consideration everything I talked about today, those characteristics of New Hampshire that are not going to change, its location, its weather, and its history. Where do you fall, Team Pro or Team Con? Let me know in the comments below and some of your reasons why. If you found this information valuable, please give me a thumbs up. That way I know to make more content like this in the future. Also, if you would like to dive down deeper into some of those characteristics of New Hampshire that could change, like it's taxes and laws, um, I did make a video called Living in New Hampshire that goes over those things a little bit more in depth. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Hustle on, my friends, and I'll see you next time. Are you team pro or team con?